After some multiple requests, Apple finally listened and gave us some nifty features that we've been asking for for the longest time. So now that Beta 2 is released, here are some things that Apple fixed on iOS 26. And of course, I'll be sure to include timestamps of everything in the video description down below. Let's start off with CarPlay. Apple CarPlay now supports zoom in multi finger ability, where you can now zoom in and zoom out by just using your fingers instead of spamming on the plus and down arrow. This only works on Apple Maps. Hopefully in the near future, third party apps can also utilize this. Now a cool feature that was featured during Apple's WWDC keynote is the lock screen spatial wallpaper effect. Now it's available on the iPhone. And then something that was added is now you have the ability to move your widgets from the lower portion of your lock page or the up portion of your lock page. Before it was fixed to the time if you select like the big long glass display. The default setting would just be to move your widgets down the very bottom. Now you can override it and you can have the normal size clock and still move your widgets down there if you prefer. Then when it comes to this notification tab, as well as the control center, Apple did revamp the blur effect a little bit, making it more visible and easy to read your icons instead of previously it kind of looked very distracting. That So it's just a lot of detail going on at once. But now it's more easy to identify each icon as well as your notification page. And if you look closely, if you use Spotlight Search to search up apps for folders, now it will actually show a black outline around the app that you're looking for. So it'll actually select the subject. I have a feeling Apple is going to revamp this. And then if you have a pair of AirPods paired to your iPhone, if you go and enable live listening, it will give you a live transcription of everything that's being said in the room. So you can visually read everything right then and there. And you can also go back 10 seconds too if you need to rehear something for better clarity. And then another long requested ability is now you could create custom ringtones directly from your device. Previously, you had to go on GarageBand to do this originally, and do a bunch of like weird methods like that. But now you could just simply go into your files app. So long as the audio clip of the MP3 is less than 30 seconds, you're able to create a ringtone from here. But if you like to, you can also use voice memos as well now. Thanks to Beta 2, with the voice memo app, you can simply record something and create a ringtone right then and there. And speaking of ringtone, Apple did gave us a remix of a certain ringtone. You see, if you go into your iPhone settings, go into sound and haptic feedback, and you select ringtone, in the default one, reflection, there's a new drop down menu saying Alt 1. And if you click on it, it plays this. Sounds really great. It's like a nice little remix. Now, since it says Alt 1 right now, something tells me in the next update, Apple will rename this, and this might become the next default ringtone for the upcoming iPhones. Now, the Safari tab received a lot of re updates in terms of redesign. You see, previously, you had it. I was recommending to go back to this look to get access to your back tab, but now it's been slightly redesigned where it's easier to find certain things, and you even have access to profiles. And then when you're on all your tabs, it also fits everything on the very bottom where previously it kind of would cut out everything. So, so this shows that Apple is continuing to update and make it more user friendly. And something tells me they're not done yet as these new UI changes are definitely making the Safari experience a lot more pleasant. Then in the wallet app, if you launch the wallet app and you select the little three dots on top and you go into your order, you'll see a new splash screen right here, introducing your phone, having the ability to scan your email app and add any tracking number that it detects automatically on the wallet app. So you can use the wallet app now to track your packages when it's going to be delivered or when it's out for de delivery. Then another improvement can be located in the camera app as the camera app, whenever you talk between the flash or the night shift mode, the label has returned, making it easy for you to detect when you select one of these. And one of the most useful features that a lot of people have been asking for is the capability to recover your device without needing a computer, a Mac or a PC. Now you can do it directly off your iPhone. This also works with iPads as well. And then if you have an Apple Watch, if you go in Control Center, a feature that was removed was the wire lock. But now it's back and you can add it on your device in case you need it. So if you're a swimmer and you're on this beta, you're good. So long as you download beta 2, you have this tool back 
and re-enabled. But there you guys have it. That is a quick rundown of all the new improvements, features, and changes that's found on Beta 2. Explain as quickly as possible because I believe these are pretty much of explanatory features. There's no need to spend several minutes on one single subject just to make this into like a 20 minute or 30 minute long video. That's just a straightforward answer. If you enjoy this type of format, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button and like, and I'll be sure to continue making these future update videos as we progress through these betas. Now, if you wish to watch more, I highly recommend checking out this video over there where I go through all the new changes in greater detail on everything that got added on Beta 2 on Apple CarPlay. In the video underneath that, that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching.